Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it because He made it. Uh, and God doesn't make junk. And God did not make you junk either. So as junky as you may feel today, I want you to know that you're in good hands in Jesus if you allow Him to work His purposes and wills for your life. And uh, that's what the goal is for our Bible study, is that God would have His way with us and work His purposes and will uh, as we study His Word together. And I can't think of a more important thing to do than to read the Word of God and let the Holy Spirit speak to us and help us to have what we need, the resources we need to get through today. And then as we read tomorrow, he gives us the resources for tomorrow. Uh, when we read it, when tomorrow becomes today. <laughs> so we are working at our Bible prophecy, Bible study. <laughs> we're keep, we're really and, and, uh, <laughs> and we're moving along down. pretty good. Yeah. So we don't have too much farther to go. And uh, not that we want to finish quickly, uh, but I, I know that our live Bible study, we're in the book of Proverbs already, and uh, I think we're on chapter 6 or something like that, pretty close to it. But we'll catch up, and it'll be okay. Well, but I want to have it tomorrow, so. <laughs> yeah, I want to encourage you that if you need the new Bible study that we will be going into, the book of Proverbs, uh, leave us a message, call us email us, whatever you need to do to let us know. Give us your name and address so that we can send you the Bible study. Or if you're attending New Life, um, come and talk to Don or I or Pastor David. We can make sure that you get a Bible study um, that we're going to be going into. Praise God. So as we get started today, we are going to be looking at the book of Micah. And there's some special things that Micah writes in there. And one of those things he writes is a song that we used to sing. Mm -hmm. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll have Don sing it. <laughs> <laughs> the voice isn't what it used to be. Yep. <laughs> it's old now. <laughs> so we are on, what page are we on there? 10? Ten? 10. Page 10. And we're moving on to question 103. Uh, before we do that, Don, do you have any thoughts that you feel you're going to share? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, it's been a real learning experience for me, walking through what I've been walking through the last month and a half, and and uh, two months, I guess. Um, but yesterday I had a setback, and I wasn't feeling as well as I've been feeling, and and um, I noticed that when I do have that kind of things, that I tend to revert back to um, and I didn't under I didn't know it then but I, I I go to my understanding and what I'm thinking and um, I finally realized it when um, I had Harry pray with me and my what God is dealing with me on now this is not for everybody but what God is dealing with me on is he's been telling me, that he wants to be my healer and so that I need to trust him and rely on him and wait for his his um, telling me and and some of the issue I've been having is is no discerning when it's him or it's my understanding or that's a good idea and and so um, there have been times where I have been um, wanting I, I I feel weak, and I'm, I'm feeling like I, I don't want to do this anymore, and I, I, want, I, I want to take the route that's easier for me, in a sense, and the way I would normally do things. When I was brought up, when my folks brought us up, um, he, my mom and dad were, were quick to take us to the doctors. And so that was something that when I married Harry, that was what I would that was my go-to and God started changing that in us because Harry would say let's pray first then go to the doctor and that was kind of scary that you know because sometimes in the middle of the night and kids are really bad and I'm just we got to take them into emergency we got to do something 
when you have that um, fear coming on you and that terror coming on you, uh, it, the way to do it is you, you, with your understanding and what you've been used to doing it and, and how you usually operate. And, and God has been showing me that he's slowly been helping me to, to um, break free of that and to, to be really relying on him and saying, okay, God, what are you saying to me? And so um, yesterday when I felt bad, I was like, I was ready to have Harry take me into the doctor again. And, and I was saying, well, it doesn't seem to be working. It doesn't seem to be getting better. I don't know what's going on. I feel, I don't know. And, 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 and that was some of my reasoning. And, and what I didn't realize, there was also fear that had come in. And so when Harry prayed with me, I had him pray with me. And I said, I'm, I'm weak. I'm weak right now. And I'm, I, I, I just need your prayer. And so he came alongside and he started praying. And one of the things he said was fear. And in that, when we were praying, and in, in that fear, the Lord revealed to me, he said, you know, you're dealing with a couple of spirits here. One is cancer, and the other is death. You're you're battling against this, and this is some of the fear that you're 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 dealing with. And he said, "I want you to take authority over that now." And and so when we were praying, and we had prayed other things, and um, then I felt like the Lord said, "Pray against the spirits, and tell them to leave and leave you alone." And, and so I did, and um, then it was just other things that we did. And, and his coming alongside and praying with me, that's part of the um, power of united prayer. Sometimes we think, well, God's here with me. I can do this on my own. I can just do it with, by myself. And, and God is saying, no, I need you in relationship. I need you in relationship with people because where two or more are gathered, there I am in the midst of them. When two agree as touching something, you know, there are, there are things where we need more than just one person. We need to come into agreement with. And so he said, there are some things that you, just like when um, I told the disciples that, that this couldn't come out when they were talking about um, the boy that had the... Um, Demon, Demon possessed. And mm -hmm. the father said, well, you know, the, they prayed nothing out. Uh, yeah. Right. And 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 the, the Lord said, well, be, Jesus said, because you prayer and fasting, this only comes out by prayer and fasting. So there are there are principles that God is trying to teach us and show us that w there are things that He has an operation that He wants us to walk in, but sometimes we we get stuck in thinking, well, this worked this way this time, so this is the way it's going to work this time. And he said, no, I do things different every time. And I want you to be listening to my spirit and, and open to me so that you can walk in this. And, and what I bring into the light and reveal to you, because you've come out of the kingdom of darkness, and now I'm bringing you into the light. When I reveal these things to you, it's not just to show you them, because it's a good thing to bring it out into the light, but because I want you to deal with them. And I want you to take authority that you have been given from me over these things and to start operating in that. And so that's what I, I saw was some of um, happening yesterday and everything just from then started to turn around. And I think that's part of this is because we don't understand the spiritual battle and that we have to take authority in it. The other thing was there are scriptures that God is giving to us that he's saying, I want you to, to say these out loud. And one of the scriptures he gave to me was in Psalms um, 118. And it talks about, I will live. I will not die, but I will live. And, and so I started those scriptures that he gave me. He said, start speaking them out because they are my truth and they need to be declared and broadcast to the spiritual realms so that you in essence are taking authority when you're doing this so let's let's just stop there a minute because of what you're saying satan can't read our thoughts no only god can right so 
there are things God gives us in our spirit that we need to speak out loud right. to bring it's spiritual existence. powers under authority. Right. right, right, right. It says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, mm -hmm. every tongue confess Jesus is Lord. Mm -hmm. And so there is a, an expression. God has given us authority in what we speak. Right, and that's why it's so important that life yeah. and death are in the power, power of the tongue. Of the tongue. God created us in his image, and one of the ways that he created us is God, when he spoke, he created. Mm -hmm. And so he has given us that ability that when we speak, we create by what we speak. Right. Um, so there are times when we overcome the enemy by what we declare, what we express from the word of God, not what we say, uh, per se, you know, our thoughts or our attitudes. It's... It's proclaiming the word of God and taking authority in the name of Jesus um, over the enemy. It's, it's what we say that is God's word in that situation. And it's important for us to, to declare, to speak out, to establish those things. Um, uh, we, we recognize that God uses... Uh, the power of our tongue. James says that the tongue is the most unruly member of the body. And uh, who can tame it? Well, the Holy Spirit can. And so it's our job to listen to what the Holy Spirit tells us to speak <coughs> in every situation. Sometimes he tells us, don't speak, don't say a thing, be silent. And other times he says, this is what I want you to say, to, to express. And many times... He'll use the written word of God to express the will of God into a situation. So that's one of the things, I lost a picture, that's one of the things that I feel like um, he's been trying to impress on me and to really um, cause me to be more intentional about is speaking the word because in that process we are doing battle. And I don't know if you can see this. I don't know. If <laughs> Probably not. Let's see here. Let's see if I can hold it up there. Oh. Anyway, there's a dove. The Lord just showed this to me this morning. A uh, dove, which it. is this the spirit. Yeah. And then next to it, plus the we're, spirit. We're having some help from the. <laughs> Thank area. you. Thanks, thanks, David. <laughs> it was just a quick. Oh, quick. Anyway, it's the boring. Bible. The Bible is the word. So the spirit plus the word will give you the sword and that's this is part of picking up the sword and battling with the sword is when we by a, a, a verse that the lord will give us that will he'll inspire us with when we'll take that 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 word because it's inspired by the spirit it becomes a sword and when we speak it out that's the action of using the sword and, and he said to me, you know, just as, because your words can create, just as you do that, you are creating the action and the uh, striking of the word down on the enemy and his, his little minions and his demons. When you take the word that the Spirit speaks to you, the Bible, the scripture that the Spirit gives you, and you speak it out, you are taking that sword. Yeah, here's a thought, one that just kind of a light bulb for me, and it's this, is that a sword is useless unless it has a handle. You can't hold on to a sword blade, mm -hmm. or it cuts you, and there's right. no way you can wield it or use it. So the Holy Spirit gives us the word and the Holy Spirit, in a sense, becomes a handle for the Word. He speaks to us how to use the Word of God. And so he, in essence, is the handle of the sword of the Spirit. And he illuminates to us the Word of God that we use to go against the enemy. So in, in some respects, and I know this is, pro I haven't really thought it through, but the Holy Spirit becomes the handle for us to handle the Word of God. He directs us. He anoints us. He speaks through us the Word of God. And so we allow Him to
give us wisdom, to give us understanding in every situation so that we can use the Word of God properly as the sword of the Spirit. Uh, the other thing that you were talking about was <clears throat> the culture of your family and the culture that God is calling you to now. Mm -hmm. And for every one of us, we all have a family culture we grew up with. And sometimes that's really good, and sometimes it's not so good, or maybe it's um, skewed in one way or another. And what God is wanting us to do is become a people of the kingdom culture, his kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on earth, in my earth, as it is in heaven. Yes, around us, but also in me. And so God is calling us to be a people who are willing to be culturally changed from what we thought and considered the old man to now what we think is the new person, the new creation in Christ. So that our culture is no longer a earthly culture made up of man's reasonings, but it is now a culture of the kingdom of God. And it's God's reasonings. It's God's thoughts. Um, the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. That's amazing when we think about it, that God allows us to operate in the same thought process as Jesus Christ did. And that means many times us putting aside our, our, our own understanding, our old culture, our family culture. I'm not saying family cultures are bad, folks. I think many times there's some really good things. But many times or sometimes they can be skewed a certain way. And, and Dawn was mentioning that her mom and dad, they, they took them to the doctors, you know? And, uh, and she's growing an understanding, okay, we're not gonna rely on that. We're gonna rely on what God says to us in that situation. And he might say, go to the doctor. Yeah, he might. He might say something else, say, stop eating this or start eating this or whatever it would be. But we need to listen to what God is saying to us so that we operate in his culture, not our old culture, the old life. Um, can we move on? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I pray that that helps you and encourages you. But uh, let's get into our Bible study today. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and, uh, no, that's all right. It was good what you had to share, sweetie. Um, we are looking at uh, question 103. And... Uh, uh, right above it, it says, The prophet Micah sees King Jesus exalted in Mount Zion. Answer the next three questions from Micah 4, 1 through 3. And Micah 4, 1 through 3 says, And it will come about in the last days that the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the chief of the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and the people will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to <laughs> the house of our God, of Jacob, that he may teach us of his ways and that we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And verse 3, and he will judge between peoples and render decisions for mighty distant nations. Then they will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations will not lift up sword against nation and never again will they train for war. Each of them will sit under his vine and under his fig tree and with no one to make them afraid for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. To verse three. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. yeah, you're right. That's okay. Verse four was a was a... A good one. <laughs> bonus. <laughs> yeah, bonus. What an amazing time that will be um, when Jesus reigns here on this earth and nations will come to him, people will be drawn to him, uh, his kingdom reign will be a kingdom of peace, uh, nations will no longer war against each other, they will rest. Uh, this scripture here basically that says, uh, and I used verse four, sorry. Each of them will sit under his vine and under his fig tree with no one to make them afraid. In other words, we will be able to enjoy the possessions that God has given us without any fear of anybody stealing them. That's the way the world's gonna operate, folks. It'll be amazing. 
When I was a kid, I lived in a neighborhood where nobody locked the doors of their houses, of their cars. Maybe some of you remember those days, because everybody knew everybody. We saw each other all the time, which was a good and a bad thing. As a little kid, because everybody knew everybody's kids, there were times things got back to my parents before I did, and it wasn't good. <laughs> But it was good in the sense that, you know, everybody took responsibility for everybody else's kids. It's just the way that it was. So this time, this millennial reign of Christ is going to be such an amazing time of peace and rest. And God's, through his son Jesus Christ, establishing the norm for this whole world. It'll be, in some respects, heaven here on earth because Jesus will physically be here on the earth. So, question, <laughs> question 103. What will the nations say to one another? What we just sang. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Yep. To the house and, of uh, and, and the last part of verse 2 says he that He, Jesus, will teach us about His ways, that we may walk in His path. Jesus will be teaching the nations what it means to walk with him, to walk in his kingdom, establishing his kingdom culture. Now, right now, we get a head start in that, folks, because we can listen to the things of the Spirit rather than the things of the flesh. We're, we're not leaning on our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledging God. So we are learning how to walk in his ways, and, and he's teaching us how to operate by walking in his pathways. Next question. 104 says, what will the world do with its weapons? Uh, and that's part of verse 3, the second half. Then they will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. So they'll hammer their swords into plows. Okay. And spears into pruning hooks. That's right. And the next question, I'll let you do that because it's just one word. <laughs> what will never again be taught or learned? Yeah. Uh, war. Train yeah. for war. That's right. We're going to have to train for war, folks. There, there won't be a need for the military. Wow. How amazing that will be during the millennial reign of Christ. Praise God for that. Um, question 106. It says, read Zechariah chapter 8, verse 20 through 23. And what will the people of the world say to the Jews? This is what Zechariah chapter 8, verse 20 through 23 says. Thus says the Lord of hosts, it will yet be that people will come, even the inhabitants of many cities. The inhabitants of one will go to another, saying, Let us go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will also go. So many peoples and mighty nations will come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to entreat the favor of the Lord. And verse 23, thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days, 10 men from all the nations will grasp the garment of a Jew saying, let us go with you for we have heard that God is with you. Hallelujah. People will desire, they'll want to go to hear godly things, to walk with godly people. We live in a day and age right now where we see people that are walking away from God, walking away from walking with godly people. They don't want to hear about it. They, you know, that's good for you, but I don't care. You know, that type of thing. And, and they'll come where God will create a desire in the hearts of men. Well, they'll hunger and desire. Um, as Jesus said, blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness. They'll be filled. He will fill them. And we as God's people, we can nurture that in other people around us. It's so exciting when we have an opportunity to, to connect with somebody who doesn't know um, the peace of God or the wisdom of God, and, and they're wrestling with things. And we somehow God allows us to connect with them, uh, to talk with them, and, and we're able to pray with them and help them. I, I remember having to take care of a of a, um, a bill that the church got. It was just a small bill, and I called to find out what's, what's this all about, and I talked to a gal named Christine, and uh, she said, oh, that was because this, that, and the other, and we took care of it, and it was fine, and they redeemed the, it was just a small bill. I think it was five bucks or something like that. Nevertheless, we wanted to take care of it, and in the process of that, I said, she said, is there anything I can help you? I said, yes. 
is there anything that you need prayer for? And she thought, oh, I'm good. I'm, I said, well, is it just something, anything? And she said, well, my sister-in-law, Sherry, and her husband, I think it's Robert, I think was his name. I don't know. <laughs> Not sure about <laughs> that. Anyways, she has cancer. And so we prayed for Sherry. And I still pray, my wife and I still pray for Sherry, Christine's sister-in-law. I'm praying one day, I told Christine, I said, call me when the miracle happens. I'm still praying that someday she'll call me back and let me know, guess what? She's cancer free. And we have the opportunity of expressing the kingdom of God to people wherever we go, folks, wherever we go. And, and sometimes it can start in just a simple thing of, how can I pray for you? Um, and sometimes people say, oh, I'm, I'm good, that's okay. And, and all right, well, we move on from there. Or it might be that the Holy Spirit says, uh, ask him again. And so you might say, certainly you need prayer for something. Uh, the world we live in, is there anything? And they realize maybe we're, we're being sincere about that. And so they do express something to us. And God allows us to connect with them uh, in introducing them to faith and believing God for the miraculous in their life. What a privilege that is, that God allows us to interact with people that don't know him. We are God's ambassadors. The word says that, Paul tells us that. And we are given the words of reconciliation. In other words, God speaks to us what we need to speak to other people, what we were talking about earlier about the sword of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us, he's the handle, and he tells us what to speak to that other person. And we have words of reconciliation. What a wonderful privilege and opportunity it is for us. That's God's heart. That's his desire is for us to help other people come into the city of our God, the city of God, which is the people of God, really. Praise God. You want to do the next one? Um, the read. That was, you didn't answer the question. Oh, okay. <laughs> what will the people of the world say? Verse 23, people? we will go with you. Uh, we hear God is with you. Okay. I guess I talked all about it. Yeah. Didn't hit the nail answer. on the head, did I? <laughs> <laughs> We're going into a new section. That's fine. We don't have much time. I know we don't, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and read this, okay. and uh, it'll set us up for next week. Okay. As we read er earlier in Revelations 20, Satan will be bound and cast into a bottomless pit during the 1,000 years of peace and righteousness upon the earth. We also learned, see questions 87 and 92, that in spite of the beauty and perfection of the king, there will yet be some who rebel. In order to test men's hearts and loyalties, God will allow Satan to be loosed for a short season. So 87... Um, says what will happen to the wicked who will not submit to his rule is that what it was yeah with the breath of his lips he will he will slay the wicked with his word yeah. and then 92 <laughs> Two. although Christ will rule with love and peace he will also rule with a strong hand what is the symbol of his rule a rod of iron rod of iron yeah okay. unbendable unchanging God is just hallelujah but he's also merciful Praise God. Well, we've taken some time today to uh, hopefully plant some thoughts into your spirit about the Word of God, the importance of knowing the Word of God, of declaring the Word of God in our lives, in situations, and spirit to spiritual beings and spiritual strongholds. It's our job to express the Word of God into those situations. We are to declare. We are also to express, to declare to people around us God's word, things that he wants them to hear that will cause their hearts to be opened and uh, available to the things of God. What a, what a great God we serve. Um, maybe some of you grew up with, with a, a father that you never quite knew what he wanted you to do. And, uh, and I had that experience a lot of my childhood. I just, I never knew what my dad wanted from me. And because of that, it, it caused me to wonder, can I really know God? And, and uh, God helped me 
to understand his heart. He really does want me to know him, to understand his ways, why he does the things he does. And uh, it's now um, a, a privilege and an opportunity in situations to pray and say, God, what do you want me to do in this? How do you want me to act? What do you want me to say? And uh, uh, I've, I've had the privilege for this month of helping uh, the pastor out at Conneaut First Assembly of God by sharing uh, on Sundays. And part of that is because of just uh, them needing that time because of the passing of their son. And uh, their names are Chris and Sheila. And if you think about them to pray for them, uh, I know that they can use your prayers and encouragement. But also, uh, just the people that are at that church, they're, they're walking through this. And, and uh, I'm thankful for the privilege of being able to share the Word of God, to encourage them. Uh, we're talking about the names of God over the last couple of weeks and encouraging them to, to find their um, comfort and safety in, in the character of God um, expressed through his names, uh, what, he, what he shows us. And uh, what a privilege that is, because I tell you, walking into that, it's like, Lord, what do I share? What do I say? And God, I, I believe, has given some wisdom in what we, uh, songs that we're singing right now and the words that we're sharing uh, what a privilege it is to be able to say, God, here I am. Use me however you can in this situation. And uh, God's, God's working some cool things there. Go ahead. One of the things that, that really struck me that I didn't have understanding, it was another light bulb moment, was when um, Harry was sharing a couple Sundays ago, and um, he shared about <clears throat> loving the Lord. And this is, see, this is part of knowing God is are loving him and in mark twelve thirty, it, it talks about loving the lord your god with all your heart soul mind and strength and then i didn't think of this this was nothing that i had ever pondered but he said the word love uh, in the greek because it's the mm -hmm. new, new loved just, yeah loved means to be attached to connected and joined to. So it, it, the the reference was uh, Psalm ninety one. Yes, but Be but you were talking about right. But it says because he has God saying because he has loved, loved me. me. And, and the word loved there means go ahead. Being attached to, connected, joined to, and that's you know that's how we get to know God. That's how we um, are um, walking with Him is being attached to him <laughs> you know he, he does come in and he lives in us but sometimes we're not really attached mm -hmm. and and it just struck me that uh, too many times in the things we go through we don't attach ourselves to God we don't connect to him we don't join with him and allow him to speak his life into us and to show us which ways to go or, or give us wisdom in things. We try to do it in our own human understanding, which is what, you know, my go-to is keep going back to, well, I, I can just go to the doctor. Right. And, but that's my human understanding. And he said, no, I need you to attach to me and to really embrace me. And that's some of this that uh, Sheila and, and uh, Pastor Chris are gonna have to learn to walk through the day by day is, is continually attaching to the Lord because he is the comfort. He's the only one that's going to help him through this. Yeah, the enemy tries to separate us by grief, by bitterness, by hurt, by pain. Misunderstanding. Misunderstanding, and a sense of entitlement. And, and the enemy is constantly trying to get us to us. doubt God's love for us. And he started it in a garden. Did God really say that? Uh, you know, God doesn't want you to have that because if you do, you'll be just like him. That's what the serpent said. And what we have to do is recognize the attack of the enemy. He constantly works at us to doubt the love of God. Uh, many of us have heard, if God is so loving, why does he let bad things happen to good people? And that is a question the enemy brings to people. And yet we read in the Bible things like the book of Job, 
bad things did happen to somebody who was called righteous. God said he's he's my servant. And we have to recognize there's more that is going on than what we can consider and see. And the book of Job is a great porthole into what God is doing through mankind and uh, how he is using us to declare his glory. Praise God. Well, folks, um, <laughs> I pray that uh, you had a, a good time with us today. And uh, Pastor David and I will be back tonight and going through the book of Romans and our study. Uh, it's been a week or two that we've, we've not been here with, with Pastor David, but we will tonight, Lord willing. <laughs> but let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, thank you that uh, your desire is for us to know you. You do not want to be strange and mysterious, aloof and far away. You're always with us. You know everything about us. So, Father, I pray that you'll help us to choose in this moment to be attached to you, connected to you, wanting to hear your voice and know your ways. Bless our brothers and sisters. Guide them the rest of this week. Help them to hear your voice. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, folks, you take care. God bless you.